can talk a bit about the future. Everybody talks, I mean, there are rumors about the next version of the BIA, the next questionnaire. And this sounds very mysterious. Especially, <laughs> no, but I mean, do you know already how will the IBMs, the impact business models evolve in the future and also the role that they would play in the certification process? There are rumors, as I said, that uh, you will need a company will need to unlock at point. least one impact business model to be certified. Yeah, so Can you um, give insights I'm, since you're the head of insights. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will. I will give you uh, uh, some insights, but I won't be able to give you a direct answer. <laughs> Um, but uh, I think there's actually some really useful context here around the, the project that we're embarking on right now that I think is really relevant to this conversation, which is uh, we've been uh, essentially doing a pretty substantial review of the overall performance requirements of B Corp certification and therefore the tool that we have that is the B Impact Assessment. And, and what the core premise of that evaluation is, uh, is we have historically had a certification process and a standard that is what I would describe as infinitely flexible. And what that means is a company is required to achieve a minimum score on what are ultimately hundreds of different indicators across impact business models and operations. But we do not specify that a company is required to have any individual question answered in a certain way. There's a range of topics that we've identified that we're developing these possible minimum requirements on there are probably things that you're not going to be surprised by. Climate action, wages, inclusion, and a variety of things like that. What, what is opening up in this conversation is what is the role of impact business models in the future version of these standards? We've historically, like I said, recognized that the idea of an impact business model is actually a really powerful, in my view, pretty innovative thing that we've developed in our standards and is really essential for our community and how we evaluate businesses. And it's actually kind of an interesting puzzle to think about how that idea of an impact business model fits into a potential new model of this certification. As a part of this exploration, we've also been, just been running some data. And about 85% of the B Corp community already has what we would consider a pretty substantial impact business model. And so when we think about the idea of a what potential... What do you call pretty substantial, meaning what? <laughs> yeah, I, I forget the exact numbers that we ran it, but ultimately, because this is based on a point system, what we wanted to make sure that we were looking at is there might be a company that earns a half a point in a field that we would yeah. broadly consider an impact business model, but we wanted to assess which are those companies okay. that have more than that. And I believe it was a 10-point threshold, okay. but I'm not 100% okay. sure. But in any case, it's about 85% that would therefore indicate that they have again, what I would describe as a pretty substantial okay. business model. Uh, and what that would mean is if we were to explore having a specific expectation of impact business models, for the vast majority of the B Corp community, that's already being met. Mm -hmm. We've also, when we look at those companies who don't have an impact business model right now, recognize that in a lot of ways, it's actually tougher for them to be a certified B Corporation. Mm -hmm. And that does mean that they are still embedding a high degree of impact in their business. It just means that they haven't done it in the same way at getting at this sort of design component. They're instead doing really good on the operation side of things. One of the middle grounds that we've kind of been exploring is whether there's actually different pathways that we can set up for those companies that have substantial impact business models versus those that don't. But again, all of these things are very actively being discussed and explored. What is the maximum? Do you have an idea of what, the, what is the maximum score that a company can get without unlocking any impact business? Be 140 model? points. Oh, so yeah, there's room for progress for everyone, right? That's even right. Without the even without the impact model. business models. Yeah. yeah. And even on the operation side, and potentially even more so, the way that we've designed the indicators, we talk about this quite frequently. We don't expect businesses to be perfect. And the indicators that we've, that we've developed, because they're so aspirational and so wide ranging, it's probably impossible for a company to achieve 140 points just on those operations, but it still is at least a signal of where there's opportunity for continuous improvement for all businesses. Okay. Uh, today we have, I think, 24 business IBMs uh, in the B Impact Assessment, uh, and it's progressing, it's changing over time. Maybe you can tell us more about this. But how would you advise a company that is a B Corp or that wants to become a B Corp 
to use those 24 or 26, maybe tomorrow even more, yeah. uh, impact business models to structure its roadmap for progress? Yeah. I think there's, there's a few pieces of advice that I can, I can probably think of. Um, the first would be uh, to find the business models that are right for you. And so the purpose of those 24 is to be wide ranging and it's quite frankly not possible for any individual business to, to even achieve any of those. They might actually be only really relevant for a company in a particular context or a particular industry. And so the goal, first and foremost, should not be to just try to adopt all the possible impact business models. It's really intended to be a reflection exercise to identify what can the purpose of my business be? How can I design my business to achieve these things? And once you do that, you're gonna have a slightly narrower list of the things that could be really relevant for you. And then you can ultimately develop things that not only can you be really passionate about, but also really good at. And so I think there's a spirit here that I would share that's, that's ultimately about quality rather than quantity when thinking about the business models. It's really should, should start out as thinking of how deep can I go and how impactful can I make? Maybe just one or two of them. And then I think it's really over time that there's the opportunity for a, a really uh, great company who's in a probably a particularly unique circumstance to try to adopt even more of them over time. And Basically, I was right? struck by the fact that for, for my book on B Corp, I interviewed South Mountain uh, Company, which Ooh, is the number one, yeah. <laughs> number one B Corp in the world. Yeah. And from what I saw on their score on the B Lab uh, website, uh, they have 185 points. Huh? but they have in total 100 points on IBMs only, meaning they have three point, uh, 30 points sorry, for their cooperative business model, 22 points for business model related to supply and the environment because they design ecological wooden house and they sell solar uh, installations for homes, 10 points additional on governance and mission locked, the fact that the mission is integrated in the uh, in the incorporation charter and uh, in the bylaws of the company. 14 additional points for philanthropy because they give 10% of profits to causes and another 24 points for their local invo involvement in the community. It's quite a lot. Because they have 10% <laughs> extra of their profits that are redistributed in pro bono work for local nonprofits. So this is exceptional, but is that the maximum points that one can get with IBMs? And so you can get more than two. Yeah, so, so you can get more than two. Ultimately, and they progress the, over time too. Huh? That's right. And ultimately the purpose of that framing is we recognize that not every company is a South, is a South Mountain company. Kudos to them, uh, particularly when companies start out in the assessment. Mm -hmm. What we very regularly see is from a self-assessment perspective, when they're completing it on their own, their scores are inflated. And where those scores are most inflated is they are unintentionally opting into too many impact business models. Yeah. And ultimately that creates a verification process that produces challenges because we're taking a company's score down. Mm -mm. And so part of that, that description is literally to do some framing and remind folks to really take a relatively conservative approach and thoughtful approach to how they answer the assessment to avoid the potential risk of overclaiming. Because ultimately when we go back to the purpose of what we're doing, we were talking just before the, the video started rolling, we're trying to diminish and avoid greenwashing. Mm. And there's a potential risk, particularly from a self-assessment perspective, that opting into too much of the assessment and, and creating a potential score that ultimately isn't reflective of the consistency of our standards might unintentionally contribute to that greenwashing. And so, so ultimately that's all just a, a high level framing to recognize that these are rare and extraordinary. Even for one, they should be a celebrate if you have just one. Uh, and not all companies can be a South Mountain company. Mm -hmm.